gone through many lectures uh, dealing with flood control techniques uh, and some mathematical modeling techniques. Uh, so here, uh, you know, my strength is to uh, control the floods using a uh, SCADA. So many of you know what is SCADA. Uh, so with this brief introduction, let me go through the slides. Yeah, uh, so uh, can can all, uh, Darshan, can you see this? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Oh, yeah, visible. Right. Now, now, now I will go ahead. In case something is there, you please inform me. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. So today we will be briefly touching upon what is flood and, uh, you know, basic understanding of flood. Like, you know, what as a hydrologist and civil engineers, you will have a different apprehension. As an electronic and instrumentation engineer, we see this as a data. Uh, so I'll just give a brief about that and how this instrumentation is going to uh, help us. Uh, so you may be wondering this instrumentation is there for many years, but then floods are also there. So what's so uh, great about listening to this lecture in today's scenario, uh, but it is more uh, apt to talk about uh, this flood control using SCADA in today's scenario because the controlling power of the computers have it, uh, you know, increased uh, in an exponential way. So that makes this instrumentation and SCADA relevant to address the flood issue. As you all know, flood is a highly nonlinear and very much varying phenomena. To model that, you need to have a multi-order measurements uh, in the sense like you need to have huge volume of data, dynamically changing data. Uh, so this particular Data, you, you always say when you model it, sir, data not available, data adequacy. Though, even though if I can give you more data, you may not be able to do it successfully because of the computational capabilities. Uh, but with these supercomputing techniques in today's era, I think uh, it is very relevant to talk, with, talk about the flood control machine now. And, uh, you know, we, we can uh, see some of the case studies by which I will make you believe what I will make, what we are talking is making sense. My PhD research is all uh, done in a uh, supercomputing facilities at Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. And we could be able to prove the same algorithms which are not working two, three years back were successfully implemented in many of the sites across India. They were still under trail because this concept itself is new. Uh, with the advent of Python coding and uh, uh, this SCADA technique with the supercomputing, we could be able to solve some real life problems. I'll be discussing about that also at the end of the session. Um, uh, so now as per the discussion content shows, uh, let us uh, see the flood uh, basics. Uh, we'll see what is the role of uh, instrumentation. Uh, then we will see uh, how SCADA is going to uh, help uh, in identifying the uh, problem as well as solving the problem. I have a live online video where the SCADA technique is implemented in the dam control application, which is in Himachal. Probably I will try to, if the network is strong, I will show you online. Uh, then some of the advanced control techniques, uh, probably in Google, if you see, now everybody is talking about artificial intelligence, neural networks, uh, and uh, machine learning techniques. So as we talk about many nonlinear data sets and the huge volume of data, uh, this type of uh, control algorithms using machine learning with the deep neural networks are, uh, uh, are very, very essential. Uh, with the existing normal model, mathematical modeling technique, uh, you may not be able to handle such a huge volume of data. Um, so we will talk about few uh, methods. Uh, then at the end, uh, I will uh, you know, explain you about the uh, case studies where uh, the SCADA is implemented. To start with the model study at CWPRS, then at Almaty Dam, which is in Karnataka, then Narayanpur Canal, that's a canal automation. Then a dam in uh, Kerala, Kerala, where uh, uh, the complete uh, wireless automation is uh, and a yeah, dam, and then another one is in UP, uh, which is the, again a uh, you know a barrage control. Uh, then uh, okay, so so let me just go ahead.
uh, hope uh, this is very known factor for uh, most of the hydrologists and the civil engineers. Uh, yeah, 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 process a uh, flood risk that the source to predict uh, to increase when land cannot able to handle the water, right? So this is a very, very common explanation and uh, uh, when rivers cannot cope up with more water, flooding happens. So all the floods occurred in the earlier instances can be attributed to this. And uh, what is the reason behind it? Now we'll, let us not discuss that about that. You will know it. Uh, yeah. So flooding also happens along coastline. This is a case, very specific case uh, for the last Surat flood. Uh, I think many of the participants are from Gujarat and SVNIT. I mean that area, Surat area, they, you know. Uh, so here, when Ukai releases the excess water uh, at the at the fag end, you know, at the last moment, uh, which is which could not be handled by the river stream, as well as there was a high tide from the coastal zone. So this particular integration never existed due to the fact that irrigation department works separately, coastal department works separately. So there were many authorities. So hence, uh, the data sharing policy was not available. Uh, and uh, uh, another issue is, yeah. Uh, sir, please uh, switch off your camera. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. Now, please continue, sir. Please continue. One second, one second. Switch off the camera. How do we do that? Sir, I am doing. I am doing, sir. I am doing oh, from my you, side. You, you do it. You do it. Because I, I have yes. many windows open. So I, I don't yes, know where yes. to how to. I did it. I did it. Please continue. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, so these are some of the case studies uh, uh, in India we have faced in the recent past. So most of my applications, uh, what I'm going to share you here are an uh, Indian context. Uh, this is the Chennai flood. Uh, uh, probably this is attributed to a man-made flood. Most of the floods are attributed to that, but uh, this particular case was very specific, where uh, Chambarambakam Lake was full and uh, it was not opened for some administrative orders and, uh, and the, the operations all took place and uh, you know at the very last moment though uh, the the incoming flood was known to the authorities which was not operated since because they were not sure that the data is right the data validity is correct so so this is one of the classic case where you need a valid electronic data to operate the gate. So when, when the data is electronically validated, probably this mistake would not have happened and the gates would have been operated. Okay. So and uh, this is the case where uh, uh, in Mumbai floods occurred. So if you see the, uh, the statistics, 24 hours, a record of 994 mm, so which the drains and all could not have handled. Uh, the, 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 here again, the reason behind the uncontrollable nature is attributed to the unable, incapable of handling huge volume of data or non-availability of the data at the right time. So again, so in Chennai case, the, the reliable data and the, could not be validated, number one. In Mumbai, you didn't had enough information, adequate data sets. Even if the adequate data is given, your system cannot able to process it. So again, again, it is coming to the uh, difficulty in the processing and non-availability of huge volume of data. And uh, here, uh, this was the recent case where within 27 seconds, about you know, I don't want to people to remember. You know, I want to remain this event, but uh, it's a very uh, silly human made error you can say or the lack of uh, technology uh, though the technology is available which was not put in use at the right moment at the right time okay now <clears throat> though you uh, have studied many mathematical models uh, uh, hydraulic hydrodynamic statistical all the models 
uh, all the models will have a limitation when it comes to a real life scenario i think ganesh connect to dena padega darshan i am live hi yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah okay 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 I'm sorry, the camera is on. Uh, so, password is missing. Is missing. Okay. So these mathematical models are uh, designed based on some limited data set with a very safe, comfortable boundary conditions. Uh, hence, it doesn't. translate to a real life scenario you can this can work in a model uh, environment such as in cwprs model conditions uh, these particular equations are very nicely working and we were very successful in creating uh, good model studies and the results were uh, very good uh, but when it is uh, implemented in the field you will have a limitation of uh, the assumptions going wrong uh, so to keep these assumptions or the live new recordings accommodated into your system it is very very essential that the same has to be learned the same has to be learned and adapted so so something called as adaptive modeling which you all aware this is artificial intelligence neural networks machine learnings are capable of doing it you cannot blame a model it is the intelligence of the student or the person who is handling it uh, you can you can uh, i mean you all aware that google handles many of its applications with their ai and machine learning techniques uh, so you have to cope up with them else somebody else will do it if you if you are not adapt into it you need to adapt to use adaptive techniques to handle the flooding conditions okay uh, so now this slide shows generically how do you classify this forecasting approaches probably i am not uh, taking more time on it because almost many of the uh, things are known to you uh, so the, the advanced technique only i will be uh, concentrating on uh, you are very comfortable with the arima models uh, but then now we are talking about uh, qrf svr recurrent neural network convolutional neural networks uh, though the names and the complexity is looks a uh, little uh, you know terrifying uh, these are all available as function calls in the uh, recently available uh, matlab or uh, the software such as um, uh, python uh, etc so yeah, yeah engineer or a researcher who has an attitude to uh, handle the mathematics Uh, can easily adapt to this neural network based uh, you know deep neural network approach hence he could able to control the phenomena called as uh, flood flood uh, flood control measures first your forecast has to be right so that is where the problem all lies and i attribute the forecast going wrong to the non availability of data number 1 number 2 the validity of the data these are the two major reasons why these approaches are not uh, uh, not uh, accurate in uh, field level conditions uh, if it is working in my computer well and then it is working in my model well physical model in my office well i expect it should work in the field also but if it is not working in the field you know it is due to the uh non linear parameters which we have modified to our comfort in the model series right so if you understand this particular part and uh, uh, so so how do we solve it that is the uh, question uh, you need to incorporate the non linearities so how do you incorporate the non linearities number 1 you have to measure it so basically it goes to instrumentation you need to go for more and more instruments installed in the process domain yes uh, many people ask the flood is a very uh, a process in which a instrument cannot withstand to uh, work or it fails 
this also has happened many occasions uh, with our live experience it can be a river it can be a dam structure or it can be a canal wherever you have an instrument the instrument need to be rigid and it should have a um, uh, it should have a reliability or uh, it should be strong enough to hold the condition so which is limited i cannot guarantee you uh, this process to overcome that now uh, this is again and the, the topic is so relevant in today's domain because the availability of non contact measuring techniques are plenty in today's environment such as viewing the earth with the best possible accuracy from the sky so it is remote sensing you put it under the category of remote sensing satellites can see a process to a, a centimeter level accuracy uh, by you know not normally but uh, but at a special cases you can have your drone based measurements where you can have a good accuracy we have camera based image processing methods available to measure the surface velocity and hence the discharge of the flow for many streams there are some case studies for ganga brahmaputra uh, where this instrumentation is not at all relevant as the width of width and the uh, flow speed is very high the contact sensors fail so in such cases we have used an imaging technique which is calibrated at uh, to the highest possible extent hence they those data are acceptable so calibration so number one measurement measurement using contact and measurement using non contact sensing validation of the data by a process called as calibration and accepting it then comes this cada to handle it now we'll go to the next slide okay so whatever we have seen as a graphical form here i am just naming it bias river tragedy mumbai floods surat chennai so what we have discussed is put in bullet points here what lacks is the timely warning and control strategy it was like that when i made similar presentation sometime back in svnit it was only strategy and now i am adding the skill also it is not the strategy you need to have the skill to handle it because the tools are available maybe 2015 probably the the, uh, the tools are not uh, so easily available so as on date Uh, what i see for my case studies are the projects what we take from from students it is lack of the skill uh, uh, by which uh, we are not addressing the problem uh, adequately uh, because the mathematics uh, is good uh, and the the self learning methods are available data is also generated with the non contact and most of the european satellites give you the data european satellites specifically indian satellites also provide but a high accurate uh 10 days repetitive data sets are available from an european satellite at a uh, very high resolution like 10 meter resolution is freely available directly from sentinel uh, satellites uh, probably some of you would have uh, heard about it um, then uh, the models fail and hence we need to adapt to this machine learning and an ai approach right now we will get into the uh, uh, electronic domain and then with the case study i don't Uh, bother you much with the electronic uh, part but then we'll see some case study so i am making not more equations and uh, this thing so it is more of a graphical thing so probably you may have you may able to if somebody is interested really the mathematics i can able to share some of the papers uh, written by us or my students which will help you Sir, your voice is not audible. Hello.
हाँ सर आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है सर नो सर हेडफोन लगा दीजिए सर ऐसा हो तो हेलो मतलब आपको सुनाई दे रहा है
अभी 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 शायद आ गया होगा हेलो ओके ओके सर हाँ ओके आ गया ना दिख रहा है ओके ओके सो हाय फ्रेंड्स सारी फॉर दी यू नो इन पुणे देर इज सम रियली सम इश्यूज लाइक यू नो वी आर गेटिंग डिसकनेक्टेड रेगुलरली okay i i'll go fast to the main content so that let us not waste any time so uh, all these things are known factors so this is the statistics so if we cannot further control it then it will lead to a, again again every year you face this uh, disaster and i'll i'll be making presentations every year uh, so uh, this this is the normal uh, standard modeling technique what you adapt which is lacking the a and uh, machine learning approaches so uh, get into it Uh, availability of data is plenty we can able to jointly solve this problem because the hydrodynamic and hydrological part is your strength and uh, we can handle the control automation instrumentation part yes uh, these are some of the examples uh, in which uh, a trail a flood forecast system was uh, developed for the krishna river discharge um, uh, krishna river discharge in Koy uh, near koina uh, you can see in this uh, uh, you know the plot like you know it is nicely matching you know that the training set the time series training set is very well uh, matching the prediction but uh, we we worked with they very comfortable this was done as a uh, college study so uh, it was very comfortably matching because we had a very nice boundary conditions it was not a, a sudden discharge or uh, with the formal uh, boundary the conditions were all normal so this doesn't help every time Uh, for a sudden flood, which which we have discussed earlier in Mumbai, Surat, or the earlier uh, you know other uh, conditions uh, which we faced in the recent past in Indian scenario and and worldwide. So we so this this particular estimation is not uh, going to be true if you don't adapt a, a machine learning approach into it. Okay, so uh, with with that uh, typical model, so we have predicted some flood near Pandharpur. Uh, and and uh, it was very nicely working in terms of a computer graphical uh, point of view okay so now this is what i have already i have talked to your book satellite imagery is available from multiple sources and very specifically i talked to you about uh, the sentinel uh, data which is uh, going to be a big breakthrough in the present scenario uh, many of my phd thesis work has been completed through that and i would like to share a few points with that uh, the complete uh, you know this imagery is available at uh, 100 km by 100 km square km size so whole india can be covered with the, say for example some n number of imageries within one imagery if we could able to teach your machine the water body area and by some technique the bathymetry it could the, the machine learning logic will predict the volume of water available in all the water bodies in the same scene so that is the beauty of uh, uh, that is a very uh, big uh, breakthrough of this particular machine learning with the sentinel data i could validate this for bhavnagar and Ker uh, bhavnagar kerala and madhya pradesh three places three scenes Uh, we could uh, do a data collection ground validation for one water body and uh, all other water body in those zone could able to uh, we could able to acquire it with a considerably very good accuracy which ministry is looking into way to accept it as a method for the future studies so it is on the validation stage but when many people start working we could produce more results and more acceptable data can be produced right so basically we need to have dems by whatever means once these dems are generated then your flood plains can be made once the flood plains are made then you can decide how do i operate my dam gate or canal or whatever water body the controlling point the controlling point is the gate right the the inputs are from the rain i mean uh, let us let us go to that okay so now this image will give a little bit of sense so all the data here lead to a hydraulic model but based on that model finally you need to operate it uh, the modeling has been there for many years but now we have come to a different level because of the computational and data available capability that you keep in back of the mind right okay so technology exists yes that's what i am 
in you know insisting uh, but we need skill to handle it that's the that is the challenge here uh, skill skilled people yes because because this is not taught in the colleges uh, because the technology grows so fast before a curriculum changes so you need to adapt to the uh, technologies and how to handle it and uh, like python many of you know that the functions are available as a open source and hence you could be able to solve very big applications uh, in no time now what i used to write a, a code in c program for about 30 to 40 pages now i, I could able to do it in a 2 3 pages of a python code that's for a comparison stick uh, yeah of course we use some function calls but yes it is it, it has improved the capability very much now this particular slide shows you uh, the earlier days you cannot blame uh, people for not modeling properly because the monitoring technologies itself is uh, of uh, not a very uh, professional they are mostly a mechanical type of device but today you are sitting in such a high end uh, domain with the precision instrumentation and control technique which are working in the automobile industry process control industry then why not it should work for water industry that is the challenge that is because we are still following this method of uh, see uh, if a man is putting his head inside the ground to see uh, how many what is the ground water level uh, but then but, and we are aiming to achieve it uh, this type of results uh, keeping this type of expertise uh, you know it's not always true but uh, you know that is uh, so you need to you need to get data from this particular technique to make this no need to you don't go behind this to prepare this chart right that is the uh, mistake probably we are doing maybe this is a lack of interdisciplinary approach also uh, yeah we need to encourage now a computer science person working on hydrology and a, a civil engineer going and registering for his masters phd in a computer science department uh, you know it's not a department it's this type of uh, adaptations if you do uh, we expect a very fast results very good results and which can be applied in today's domain which will be very much useful for decision makers like state central government agencies in handling the future floods okay okay so this is to show how how simple when you open a sensor and see uh, when it comes as a black box people are afraid like this is an instrument used in the structure for structural monitoring uh, specifically in the dams i mean anywhere in that case but we use similar this instruments with a very uh, nice casing or uh, uh, you know tested and certified casings uh, which is called as an uh, instrument protection protocol ip68 uh, type of casing by which we could able to measure the dam deformations such as uplift stress strain um, uh, you know the joint meters and the tilt and many 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 parameters but basically if you see the structure it is as simple as this you have a uh, which is this is known as a vibrating wire type of instrument which is an electronic instrument what is the advantage of having an electronic in instrument is the data is readily available in electronic form uh, in, if you are talking about scada and uh, high end data control or a control system you need to get the data electronically so that it can be transmitted through the channel which is the space uh, so a yeah, process can be acquired in my room and i could able to apply the very sophisticated algorithm sitting from here and then i could again put back for the control application so so you need to have the data in electronic form that is a mandate so which is possible very much by these electronic sensors and uh, basically electronic sensors give output in terms of voltage current or frequency that's what uh, this slide shows uh, for a structural monitoring we use a uh, frequency data because other form or the other energy forms like current and voltage go through a decaying process like it loses its energy and it won't be available for a larger distance so in case if you want to transmit a, a ukai dam data to svnit now probably that is too larger distance this data will uh, die down in the process of uh, transmission but the same can be handled if you transmit in terms of a frequency because Uh, the amplitude dies down whereas the zero crossing intervals still remains by which you could able to uh, tap the process you know the process is converted in terms of frequency so the frequency change and uh, frequency reduction is attributed to the uh, 
a process change, a water level change, a velocity change, a discharge change, you know, that you have to always relate it. When I talk about current or voltage, the current or voltage is a representation of the physical process, which is basically for a flood point of view, we need to have a rain uh, or a water level or a gate level or a velocity or a discharge, right? In case if you get able to map these four or five parameters properly with the, uh, the volume, uh, then yes, you are addressing the problem right. Okay, now this slide shows some of the instruments with the process. Now, now every mouse click, I'll be show getting some instrument coming and sitting on it. This is a hydrological process, a cycle, uh, a condensation, precipitation, finally it goes to a river and then finally to a sea. In between you have a lake reservoir. Say now for the first click, now, now here, now we are getting some sensors here, right? So this is a prop, a very prominently known as a weather station, uh, which predicts from the humidity, temperature, and the process, how much rain is going to occur. The same thing is also possible with an evapotranspiration technique also, but uh, yes, traditionally today, India goes by this method. IMD normally installs uh, uh, the weather station, which will have wind speed, wind velocity, temperature, humidity, sunshine, you, you name many of these parameters, evaporation, uh, you know, all the, the, the information which are required to quantify the volume of water uh, available at that particular point. So sin, even in spite of that, why we don't get a good uh, modeling? Because the network of these IMD rain gauge stations are not adequate because it was meant for just predicting, uh, you know, the scale was low. Uh, that was due to the reason that you, you in, in case if you want to install a, a weather station, you need to have the security measures, you need to maintain it in a forest zone where the uh, huge rainfall is expected. You don't have the uh, aspects to ensure to have a good instrumentation or to secure it. So that was one of the reasons. So people look for a non-contact type sensors or model it from the sparse network. Okay, so you, you got this. Uh, and now we have the flow measured here at this particular point. Uh, now, uh, so now, now this particular slide added some more instruments here. So these are all flow meters. Uh, this, is the, this is a well uh, through which, you know, groundwater is measured, many of you know, uh, with the sensor called as a digital water level recorder or a groundwater sensor, which is normally inserted through a, a borehole. So borehole piezometer, they say. So piezometer principle is it is a uh, deflecting diaphragm uh, based on a pressure or a strain, strain gauge type instruments are used here. Present days now we have advanced techniques known as MEMS techniques are also available anyway. So let us not waste more time on it. Okay. Uh, apart from that, to measure the surface runoff, you have uh, water level sensors or discharge missions you have acoustic Doppler profile is the, the Doppler velocity sensors, which can able to, uh, these are all, uh, these particular windows show some of the uh, sensors. Uh, so the, basically it is to estimate the volume of water available or the discharge crossing a particular instant so that you can able to estimate the volume of water uh, available at your control point, which is the dam gate. Now the runoff is another challenge process. To get a runoff, what is required? I think this point we have already addressed, you need to have a proper proven digital elevation model. So that is absolutely a modeling. So which, which you can make it through the satellite high resolution imageries or with the drone. So techniques are available, how to handle it. The skill is what I feel like. Yeah. Uh, and now the third uh, one is uh, here we show some uh, ADCP, acoustic Doppler velocity meters to map the surface to the bottom velocity here and then by which you get the uh, discharge more precisely. So these are all new techniques available today uh, which were not earlier available. Earlier discharges used to be calculated only by a water level sensor and hence the uh, flood uh, routing is also based on a water level variation. But now you get a discharge with uh, uh, very, very, very uh, high resolution actual ground mapping through which you could be able to get the uh, control also more accurate. Uh, again, the problem is uh, during flooding season, you cannot use a ADCP to run across the flow, which is not possible. So this, uh, this exercise is done pre-monsoon or after the, uh, after the 
pro post monsoon uh, to get the profile uh, so that the surface velocity alone is normally measured using a camera based system and uh, from the pre and post monsoon uh, uh, profile you calculate your discharge so this is how you could able to get a better accurate data so that the data is more and it is accurate it is going to be voluminous and it is going to be accurate also so whatever you have seen in the small screen in the earlier slide i just uh, enlarged it here so a weather station how does it look like this is our all actual installation across india uh, this is a uh, typically a water level sensor installation with a solar panel and uh, it can be either a radar or uh, ultrasound type these are all very specific cases this can be a separate session of lecture but then to get the water level change this is a water quality uh, we are now putting in ganga cleaning project so this will have about some 40 to 50 parameters being online uh, monitored and then transmitted through telemetry to the ground station by which you could able to get the water quality index at this point this is a snow cover snow pillow this is the adcp what you have seen in that this is the ground water well in which you put the pressure sensor and this is the acoustic doppler unit one if you can able to fix it at the bottom of the canal or the profile uh, this could able to Uh, get the water speed at different layers, different layers altogether. So the the good resolution instrument, what is available from Suntec, could be able to give 128 uh, samples or layers. Well, uh, it it picks up the velocity at 128 uh, layers uh, from the top to the sensor line, and uh, at every point it makes a, a velocity approximation by which it could be able to calculate the discharge, provided the cross section is given. Uh, into the calculations it can go in a closed pipeline also this is a, a open channel as well as a closed pipe also many interstate issues uh, you know we we you we, we you recommend this way to solve the problem uh, when a one state gives six volume of water the other state says we don't receive it so by using this technique you can find out where the water is lost or if there's a leakage or so so the completely the whole thing put together this is how this is the one which is implemented maybe 5 years back for Uh, Krishna Basin in Maharashtra. Uh, so, uh, so, so here you can see whatever we have talked about the sensor ADCP, all those things end up here. So only these sensors doesn't make a scatter. So this is just one percent of it, but most important one percent. Unless otherwise you capture the process precisely, adequately, all these thing doesn't make any sense because this is nothing new. These are all available in field. for different industries we are going to use the communication channel or the computer industry but the process what we are interested in the flood is basically attributed to the 1% of the data measurement what we are talking i mean the 1% may not be relevant it may be you can give a higher percentage but you know that is where we have to concentrate more because other things are available you know you, you should know how to utilize it by understanding developing your skills right okay Uh, uh, there is a link file which takes you to a scada uh, altogether but that's too much of electronics i'm just skipping that i'll just go to the so once the data is acquired here it comes to a supervisory control and a data acquisition module uh, so it is supervisory control how do you supervise supervisory you cannot supervise the supervisory knowledge of yours and the expert is fed into the program using a machine learning or artificial intelligence which Uh, learn the pro learn the supervisory knowledge from many people and it makes a decision so this decision making capacity increase day by day once the data goes in and in so your daily data goes into it so this system improves its knowledge every day it is a child you you start it as a child and then it comes out at the 12th standard it is fit for a iit je exam so you you are making it eligible to handle uh, a je exam so so it came through the it learned the process through many years so that is the same concept we are trying to impose into the uh, system which was not earlier not possible because the computing capacities were less you, you put a such a process it takes 2 3 days to run but now uh, you know i have a computational example of uh, 10 into 10 lakhs of data sample getting computed in 8 minutes which in a normal computer took about uh, more than a day or so so that is the level of uh, improvisation many many things are getting uh, updated day by day computer techniques are uh, further improving uh, so we need to update to that uh, so once that data is uh, handleable and learnable then your supervisory control makes a sense 
and data acquisition. Data acquisition is collecting the online reliable data. So once the data is collected, stored, it should be transmitted through a wireless or a wired medium. So this is a big challenge. Uh, we, we let us not uh, talk about the complete thing, but to name few, to name few. Uh, traditionally, people know, sir, we put it in a mobile network. Now, so today when we are taking the webinar, how many times we lost the connection? So this is expected during a flood also, uh, because the first thing to get affected is the mobile tower. So then people will say like, yes, let us go to a satellite communication. Yes, you can try that also. That is the other one, but satellite communication is, uh, you know, strong, but uh, still while watching a TV, when there is a rainfall, you lose your data. Uh, so every technique has its own limitation. So wisely we have to do it. So the better way is to use a radar techniques or a microwave uh, communication technique, uh, something known as uh, long ranging or a uh, split spectrum communication, which is being adapted in uh, the Western country. So we need to take it up. Uh, th these techniques are available even in India, but we are not using it for our hydrological flood applications. We still depend upon your GSM network. So many of the times we lose the vital information. So uh, our uh, probably this is not a hydrology engineer's interest, but uh, there is an option available to use the long ranging uh, spread spectrum communication, which is free of cost available for a uh, load bandwidth uh, data sets. In case if your data is more, you should go for a radio with the, all the permissions and all radio permissions, you could be able to transmit. Because most of the reservoirs are available in the hilly terrain where you don't expect to have a very good quality uh, 4G data network. So in case if that is ensured, then in the coming years probably, we can depend only on the GSM GPRS. Else, you need to talk, think about the radio communications and the satellite data also in some extent. Okay, okay. so I think I am just skipping all these things since uh, uh, this is what the problem is. What we are trying to achieve is this, but then what you get, I mean, students will, I think many of you will be appreciating, you will be working on this. So how do you go to this level? Uh, yeah, one is, uh, yeah, so, uh, even uh, you, you have to really go to the, uh, uh, drone based uh, or a laser based data collection, but this is the R with this with the machine learning approach, you, you can be able to map this uh, by having the other parameters, not the really flow dependence that DEM creations from a ground level model. And many a times it changes. This is the case of a Brahmaputra river cases, so where you cannot have a dependent sensor, so the river course changes multiple times. So we have putting cameras across so that wherever it changes, the camera will capture the surface flow. But what will happen to the uh, the flow, what you normally used to calculate discharge, the one-third depth, which is mathematically derived. So by this method also, you could be able to get the, uh, uh, yeah, some uh, advanced techniques. Okay. So this is a CNN approach. I am not getting, this is part of my PhD work. Uh, using a convolutional neural network, you we could be able to get a, uh, data driven approach basically uh, we approved the bathymetry of reservoirs are estimated uh, with less than uh, nowhere i have got an error of more than a centimeter uh, with the cnn estimated to the satellite uh, image penetrated depth so uh, the cnn was uh, very powerful but computationally intense but you are not going to do the real coding if the functions are available online you need to uh, give the right attributes to the weightage functions and the right inputs to the network uh, if you understand the process properly. So it is a skill work, not as a really a very high intelligence. Okay. So this is one of the mathematical model. Uh, here also there are some link files, how many mathematical models what we developed for suitable uh, PR studies, but I'm not getting into it. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, the modeling approach and the models developed by the standard present techniques have been applied for a physical model based flow control, uh, flow control technique at CWPRS. This particular slide shows a Mumbai port model. Uh, Mr. Jitin Shimpi uh, is one of the engineers who helped us in doing it. He's also probably there. So here, this is the zone where an airport is being built. So for that process, they want to divert river one, river two, and other three rivers discharge. And plus, this is the area where Panvel city is located. So it is the computationally difficult, but in a model, because the 
the flooring is all concretized so you have a lot of controlled environment so this could be very easily handled by a scada system uh, developed indigenously by uh, we people so the screen everything we have developed this is a scada screen so you can see kaloja river here so when i click this particular point it will take up the discharge data which is collected from the site which is scaled down for kaloja in terms of liters per second so exactly that liters per second i can generate by operating a flow pump uh, sorry uh, yeah, for measuring by a flow meter and a control valve by operating it so it is a control so this is called as a scada because the multiple water levels at one maybe about some 20 points we are measuring water level and at uh, many places we are controlling the flow in a dynamic manner so this will work in a model very well uh, with the existing mathematical modeling but when it goes to the field you need to have an adaptive approach as well so now uh, here uh, so this is an online data measurement for a uh, structural monitoring uh, instrumentation which is developed and implemented in uh, indira sagar reservoir which is in madhya pradesh so this is the dam structure you can see it. so this is the instrument gallery we have many instruments there now i will try to connect this particular one through online let us see whether it works uh, yeah. yeah i am not taking a, if it connects i will come back to that till that time i will go to the next slide system is slow uh, yeah <clears throat> Yeah, it is here. Uh, yeah, okay. So you can you can see this, but uh, I am the second screen. Yeah, this is how the it goes. I mean, I have an access here. Uh, if you, so I am, I am actually logging into a logging into a dam structure live. Now, 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 what you are going to see is a live. Uh, this is a SCADA screen. So this is the Machal Pradesh. So the dam structure, you have a non-overflow and a overflow section. So I will click a non-overflow section. So now I have gone to the same structural point. Now, if you see, these are all the sensors installed in this particular location. Uh, strain meters, temperature. Uh, so what I have here is a join meter. So let me see some temperature here. Temperature. I think I should not load my network because I'm afraid. Uh, so yeah, but it is good that now probably many of you can see this, all of you can see this. So I'm live seeing the data actually being captured from the dam in Imachal Pradesh on the screen. This is a complete uh, supervisory control thing. There is no control here. It is an observation screen, but uh, control also in the strain goes beyond the limit or uh, you can always open really operate the gate to release the water. So that's not a big deal. But that option uh, is not given to a remote user. It, it is available only with the dam authority. That is for a security reason. But this is a SCADA. Uh, when a strain or a dam tilt goes beyond the limit, uh, we can always say that uh, we can always uh, open or you know do some remedial measures based on the hydrology experiences or whatever the knowledge what you have. Okay, let me go to the next one. I'll take another uh, 10 minutes darshan. Um, uh, so now these are all, this is the space available for us, taking completely continuously capturing the globe. Uh, so if you know which satellite gives what, you know, those informations are available with us uh, with a lot of search and uh, experience, you could be able to attack the problem, right? But uh, if you want to work in a very comfortable zone, you can take what is available easily and freely, and then you develop a model which has its own limitations. So, but uh, the real data is also available in the space. Uh, you need to know how to pick it up. <clears throat> now, this is the, okay, do you have enough data? So now I have a, a deep neural network, which wants more and more data. I'm not having data. In my research study for the reservoir bathymetry, I had more data, but uh, I have the very strong network, but my data was inadequate rather with the, the 30 lakhs data samples was less for the network. So in case if I could have given more data, probably I would have got a better results. But uh, but getting the bathymetry of a 100 kilometer zone in all the water body itself is a big breakthrough. 
it's a success uh, you know so that's what like you know so so it uh, with the existing thing itself we have not actually attacked the problem to the extent what we are supposed to okay uh, so this is a, a proper uh, yeah, neural network approach so it probably i'm not getting into it so basically what you need is from this you need to develop this and you need to get to this which get into my scada system to operate otherwise my scada doesn't uh, it is a dumb machine which takes the input and does what it was asked to do right uh, a human can control it very well if you put it in an automation mode it uh, me mistake it is like an auto driven car uh, it it, uh, it runs on a normal uh, highway in a proper lane uh, but in case if some uh, in indian scenario say some animals are crossing somebody is coming inside suddenly so probably don't know how to handle it so there you need the intelligence adapted so if the network is start that cows will come in the highway probably it will know uh, decide what to do and you need to give the control similarly if a flood of such nature occurs which gates to be operated when to be operated the same exercise is done for narora uh, barrage in uttar pradesh where there are 63 gates are controlled which is impossible for a human to control it in that case a human knowledge uh, a, a knowledge from a human is taken to teach a computer and the computer overtakes him Uh, in a multiplying the when you multiply the process to 63 gates it operates the right gate in a right sequence so that the flood is routed uh, as a human you need to have 63 person standing in every gate otherwise one person has to run here and there or he operates the gate which is closer to him which results in a flood in conditions okay so these are the cost analysis what we made for uh, government of india by putting instruments and a um, uh, uh, machine learning approach okay so now i'll get into probably one one dam which is totally an indigenous scada uh, developed by a uh, totally an Indi indian technology with a very low cost so let us say this is for, done at almati dam uh, in uh, karnataka uh, maybe somebody would have gone there so this is the almati dam structure on the right bank top there is a control room so, uh, uh, you know so just as so overview so this is the remote control room which is a scada room this room is completely like a hollywood style room you can enter with all complete security access anybody cannot get into it the computer access everything is been secured and you have a glass door which by which you can watch the upstream as well as downstream conditions in a, in a all the time uh, uh, the when a human is not there the system is put into an automatic mode okay uh, um, so here what and also this scada is you know again supervised control and data acquisition probably the slides you can watch later uh, this is some of the electronics like you know the network configuration how many ethernet switches all these things are required to develop a scada the architecture looks like this um, uh, actually we 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 were discussing all these parts the sensor measurement comes here then it gets into this architecture uh, then the architecture will get into a scada system with the uh, knowledge base into it then the control part where the motor uh, is driven based on the uh, data what you get with and the knowledge so uh, the screen showing a water level and this is another uh, input for the same almati dam with the strain meters inserted onto the dam gates so that uh, you know based on the strain and temperature also the gates are allowed to operate in case the gate is more uh, you know you, you know getting more and more water and the gate is strained it automatically releases the excess water that point is already given to a maximum limit uh, over which it uh, it always has a, a super user uh, permission so yeah an sms will be sent to the executive engineer he has to approve the call uh, for that particular condition so that somebody will validate then the final opening will take place uh, so this is a scada screen same uh, reservoir itself is photographed and you have all the gate positions here 